Okay, guys, we've already had a speed run to 2350 to 2400, and now it is time to make it to 2450 and then to 2500. Of course, I'm doing a voiceover that way we can actually talk about the, about the games. And as you can see, I started with the Pierce defense, nothing fancy, and uh, my opponent chooses the Fianchero variation. Now, again, we're playing three minute games, but this should be enough for us to get mm, numerous games and see our openings in action. At this point, we made it to the middle game. The only thing that we're missing is developing the light square bishop. And many times we simply bring it to e6, then queen d7, and, and so on. Of course, I gotta be careful with that knight going to, to g5. So bishop f5 instead, putting pressure on the knight right away. And once I do that, I just want to do something like queen d7, and then bring my rook to d8. That's it, guys. We made it to the middle game. Now we play chess. There's a pawn on d3, which is a, a good target. And we have had so many lessons on this, so many middle game lessons. So anyhow, rook d8. My opponent has to compromise that fianchetto bishop. And now all I'm thinking of is trying to make progress little by little. h6, I don't want uh, bishop g5, but they went ahead and took anyways. Because if I had taken the bishop, they had knight f6. So I did an in-between move, um, bishop e4, so they don't have knight f6 with the fork. And now I just take on f3, or I could take the, bi the bishop on g7. Of course, we got to calculate. And I think, guys, that if I take on g7, they take on e4. I don't win anything, but this way I ended up up a man piece. So nothing too crazy, simple, desperado tactic that we have already talked about. And now... I just need to make sure that I don't get checkmated. If this queen gets to h6, I could get checkmated on g7. So now I'm asking them, what are you going to do about that bishop? So next, um, king g7, trying to bring the rook to the h file. That file is semi-open, and we could definitely put a lot of pressure through that through that file. Of course, I could do something like bishop h6 right now, but it's just not going to lead to anything. There you go, guys. So now we just go to h7. And don't forget, at this point that we are up a piece, I'm only thinking about um, just simplifying the game, of course, because if I make it to an end game, then it's going to be very easy to convert. But also, I don't want my opponent to have any counterplay. So that queen on the board could get me in trouble. So if I could trade queens, that would be great. Now, simple tactic, guys. See if we can figure it out. And of course, bishop g4. And if they take on g4 now, we have queen h4 and once again we put pressure through that h file all right so sort of like an in-between move if now i move my queen they get the bishop for free so instead we block and now we take on g5 that's it we simplify the game a little bit more my king is not uh, in trouble anymore but i'm going to use that h file to attack so two things, I'm trying to simplify the game or I'm trying to uh, attack because I have more pieces. So either plan is going to be fine in positions like this. Now, queen f6, simple. I'm trying to get to f4 and force the trade of queens. Now, I did it anyways. If they take, fine. I'm going to undouble my g-pawns. If they don't, then I'm going to have my queen on a very dominant position to continue to put pressure. Now, notice that we started to play a three-minute game, and we still have a minute. This is plenty of time to not rush and make silly mistakes. My knight was doing nothing on the queen side. I'm trying to bring it over maybe to f6 to hit g4, but uh, this is definitely very uncomfortable to play for, for white. So queen b5, we know what they want. They want to hit on b7. So I went back, just taking care of that. Because again, guys, I don't want to give them any counterplay. So what's the easiest plan now to convert? Um, I'm thinking rook h8, trying to get to h2. And I might even double up my rooks on the h file if it were necessary. All right, now 
rook h3, put in pressure on the bishop. We could also go to h2, which is the seventh rank. But again, guys, I'm happy with simplification. I didn't win the bishop, but that's one less rook to worry about. Now check, check, and oop, checkmate, checkmate in one move. <laughs> so there you go, guys, the checkmate, um, nice, but this game was uh, won a long time ago when we, got, when we got the piece. So next game, we made it to 24-13. And we're playing, is that? <laughs> All right, so we're playing another Pierce defense. Now, Bishop g5, we've had uh, a lesson on it. We've played it so many times. And this is definitely an indication they're going to castle to the queen side. So we do c6, we do queen a5, we do pawn to b5. Just to let them know that we're ready to attack them on the queen side if they go there. Uh, my king, I'm going to delay castling because I know that if I castle kingside, they're going to have a perfect plan to attack my king. So bishop a6, this is a move that we don't see often, but here it simply made sense to put the bishop on that diagonal. And don't forget guys, we've talked that if things get too ugly on the king side, I might even castle to the queen side, like not castle at all or castle, or castle to the queen side. Now, notice that the white king is not really safe in the center, or at least I'm trying to prove that by uh, opening up the center. But also, going to the king side is going to be pretty much open. Going to the queen side, it's not going to be so easy. So they have to be very careful because now the attacker could end up being attacked. So anyhow, um, at this point, I'm very comfortable in this position. I just need to make sure that I don't make any silly mistakes. So b takes c3 is an option, but I decided to bring the knight over. If I do now rook d8, I'm going to be confiscating the d3 square. Yeah, knight f3, fine. Uh, we cannot do knight d3, but after rook d8, I have bishop, knight, and rook controlling d3. Okay, now should we do knight d3? Should we do something else? Look at your candidate moves, guys. Feel free to pause the video as many times as you need. Now, by doing this move, I guarantee, number one, their king is going to be in the center. But now, after queen a6, I'm going to be putting a lot of pressure. Actually, queen b5 was played. <laughs> uh, I'm going to put a lot of pressure down the, the light squares. So there you go. They're happy to get the pawn on h6. That's not relevant to what's happening in the center. And now I'm trying to find the best way to finish, uh, finish that king. And guys, pause the videos. Think of what you do in this position, of course. I don't want to trade pieces, so knight d3 is not that attractive. But what if my knight, my other knight, could get into the game? Well, I'm thinking, if my knight, my f6 knight, were in the air and I could put it anywhere, where would I put it? Well, I would put it on g3. From there, I'm hitting the rook and I'm putting pressure on e2 as well. So knight h5, knight g3 is interesting. And I think I ended up doing that. I don't remember. <laughs> so there you go. Um, knight h5. If they take, fine, there's no way they're going to get to my king before I get to theirs. So, like I said before, the attacker is being attacked right now. And one more time, this was a three-minute game, and I still have plenty of time to finish. There you go. Now, we traded bishops, that's fine, but all of their problems are still on the board. So knight g3, it comes with a tempo on the rook, and now they have to be very, very careful. Okay, guys, so what do we do now? Take your time, pause the video right now. What would you do? Well, I was about to do knight d3, but queen f1 is just checkmate. Powerful knights with the queen, this is just, uh, it was just too much. So we made it to 24-21. Um, that's going to be 29 more points to make it to 2450. That's our goal for, for this speed run. So another Pierce defense. Uh, yeah, guys, three black pieces in a row. It is what it is. Now, Austrian attack. We had, we had a lesson. We talked about C5. And uh, yeah, so the, all of these guys is theory. If you went over lesson uh, 73, I think it's 73, 74. No, 73. 
you should know no no is it 73 yeah i think it's 73 you should know this Now, this one, um, not too much to explain other than you have to know the theory. For this one, I had to review it, memorize it, and know that e takes f7, we're supposed to do king f8, and then we get the pawn anyways. Just like in the other game, it looks like my king is not safe, but if you look at their kings in the center, we could claim the same thing. Also, at any time, I could do rook f8 and then castle by foot. So, queen f5, this is also thematic here i've reviewed multiple games by masters like carlson nakamura they've played this and i know queen f5 is thematic so for now i see a free pawn on c2 should we take it or not <laughs> uh, for the most part you don't want to take it but here i felt like it was safe so now it's a matter of the white pieces proving that it, it was a poison pawn Now, should we take a second, <laughs> a second pawn? Well, that's a good question for you guys. Now, the good thing is that this pawn actually comes with a tempo, so the rook had to move. And now I have all the time in the world to do rook f8 and move my king out of the way. Or I could, just like in the other game, I could do, uh, I could bring my knight into the attack. So queen c5, simple. Um, the idea is to not allow them to castle. So by, by controlling g1, the king cannot castle. So yeah, I think I was indicating there, guys, that after I did queen c5, they could have done queen b3 and get the bishop. Yeah, I had to go. I had to go back now. Now I had to go back because if I move the bishop, the rook takes on b7. Now my opponent is trying to think: Should I bring the rook back to where it was? Well, yes, we get we got back to the same position. And if I go back to c5, they could do queen b3 with a fork on the bishop. So it's time to bring the bishop back. No hanging pieces. And now we just move the queen out of the way. Of course, we got another pawn, and now. In my mind, I just need to simplify the game. Guys, I'm up three pawns. This is more than enough to win the end game. So there we go. Now they took on b7, but they left the king alone. So fork, um, that's going to be a free bishop now that the king moved. Remember not to play uh, mechanically, guys. We did a fork to get the rook. Well, um, no need to get the rook right away. We look to see if there's a better move. All right, so this one, guys. Pretty simple. I'm trying to do checkmate on f2. I had queen e1, but I didn't think it was, uh, well, it was probably winning. So queen e1, queen e2 was probably winning. But now there's a direct threat to checkmate on f2. I think my opponent did queen g2. And then all that we need to do is incorporate the rook to deliver checkmate on the back rank. So there you go. Now rook c8. And if they take or not, I'm ready to just go to the seventh or back rank. So guys, simple tactic, deflection, the knight moves out of the way and then checkmate on e1. So we made it to 24, 28. And let's see. Okay, so finally a game with the white pieces. Guys, playing the same thing with the white pieces now. Um, King's Indian attack. So there we go. We got the pawn on e4. And this is from lesson 79. So the same thing that we have talked over and over and over is what you're seeing in these games. So 95, putting the knight in the center. Um, happy to go for a trade of queens. I'm okay with that. Now the only thing I need to do is develop my bishop. And here, guys, my opponent, a 2440 player, simply blundered. Now, should we take the free knight with the knight or with the queen? Um, any day I would take with the queen because I'm going to be up a piece and I want to simplify the game. That's it. Up a piece. There's no way they're going to come back from this. So that was a quick game and we made it to the next one. I think after this game, I made a draw or something like that and I got a point. So that's why you see 24-37. And now we're playing the birds opening. Guys, birds opening, many people don't like it. But if you look at the way that I'm playing it, I got my fianchetto on the king side. So it is almost like the... King's Indian attack or the ready sort of systems, 
but I already have my pawn on f4, so why not? Now, d4, you're going to see that this gets a little bit different to what we typically get, but we're familiar with some patterns like, look at that square on c4, my knight wants to go there, just put in pressure, my opponent strikes the center right away. And here I'm I'm trying to decide should I take or not. So I took. Now curveful to do knight c4. Um, it, it seems very natural, but careful with that. Here the plan is actually very familiar to what we do in the Banco Gambit. We have not reviewed that opening yet, but I'm just mentioning it for you guys to see that you never know when we could use ideas from one opening into the other. So even though I don't play the Banco Gambit. I often review games with a Banco Gambit and I, I know more or less what the ideas are. But also in our middle game strategy lessons, we have talked about paying attention to the pawn structure. My pawns on e2, d3, c4 are indicating that I should be expanding on the queen side. Also, look at my fianchero bishop. It is aiming at the queen side. My opponent knows it. They said, forget about doing before, but now the b5 square becomes weak so i didn't go for it instead knight goes to c2 putting pressure on a3 and my opponent again says i'm not going to let you get that pawn so i'm not 100 sure what to do next i could do a3 to do before being consistent with my pawn structure i need to expand on the queen side guys all right so bishop is gone if they take with the queen, I'm thinking of activating my rook. Don't forget, the dark square bishop is now gone, so I could use the dark squares for my pieces. Queen c3. If they take, I open up the b file. All right, so they said I'm not going to trade, so it is time, guys, to do b4. That's it. Sooner or later, we have to pay attention to our pawn structure. Now, look at b7. We're putting pressure with the rook, with the bishop, and... If necessary, I'm going to double up my rooks on the b-file. Also, pay attention to the pawn on e3. And the coolest thing about this position is that my opponent is still behind in development. So look at that. That's a very ugly move, but this is something else that we have talked about. When you are attacking, the best move typically looks really, really nice. Um, when you're defending, the best move typically it is a bad looking move like rook a7. So queen e5, hitting c5 and e3, that's a simple fork, but hey, it uh, it works. And they have no choice but to do rook queen d4. So I trade, I keep drilling on that weak pawn on b7. Now guys, should we take on b7 or not? Well, of course not. My bishop is really, really powerful. I'm not going to trade it, not even at the expense of the pawn. And don't forget that if I take on b7, um, ultimately they could just take my pawn on a3. So instead, we keep putting pressure. Notice notice that we have plenty of time. No need to go like crazy. Now, rook f4, this is a move that I had from before. And it's simple. I'm just navigating through the dark squares to collect that pawn on d4. Then I want to do the same thing to the pawn on e 3 And... I'm paying attention to that from the moment we get rid of their dark square bishop. Okay, give me the pawn. Of course, we gotta be careful not to get trapped. <laughs> but in this case, we just go back. And now the plan is simple. I'm gonna go back to f3 and I'm hitting the pawn on e3. Now guys, what would you do if your opponent does rook e8 defending that pawn? Well, I hope that you paused the video and you guessed it. The simplest way to go about it is just opening up the other rook, guys. Don't forget, on Lesson 107, we talked about how rooks um, not only attack on, uh, through open files, but also through open ranks. So that's it, guys. We made it to 2442, and we're really close to 2450. So here we're playing a 2377. I'm going to play another... <laughs> another bird's opening and this time i'm not going to do g3 so i'm going to play it like this my opponent quickly chops off my my knight and now look guys pay attention one more time to my pawn structure i have d2 e3 e4 they're aiming at the king side so are my my bishops so that means i should be expanding i should be attacking on the on the king side 
So opposite side castling attack, forget about that. Everything changes. There you go, a5. Pawn storm, I need to make contact. And typically whoever makes contact first should have the initiative to be able to, to, con to convert. Now, guys, we started to talk about opposite side castling attack on lesson number 58 all the way through 62. If you went over those four lessons, you should be a master at opposite side castling attack. So quick sacrifice, this is all we need. Open up my opponent's king. This game is not going to make it to the end game. It's all about opening up lines, attacking the king, and uh, trying to checkmate. Now, should we trade queens? Of course not, because we need the queen to attack. Now, here I think I had no choice but to go queen e2. A little bit passive, but in the long in the long run, it's, it's going to it's going to come handy. Now d5, preventing my knight from jumping to c4. So my knight doesn't have many good squares, but we gotta find a way, guys. So c4, just trying to remove those pawns, like I told you on lesson 58. If I could get rid of my pawns from the queen side, I would just throw them off the board because I need those lines for my rooks to attack the king. So that king is getting out of the way. And now I need to find a way to incorporate my rooks. Now they're threatening to take on b3. I'm not really concerned, guys, because again, I just need to get to their king. Okay. Now, if they take on b3, knight b3, guys, that's opening a file where his queen and king are. The most, the most powerful pieces uh, they have, they don't want to open up lines towards, towards those pieces. So anyhow, um, now the bishop is pinned. So here we got our piece back and now we're up a couple pawns, okay? Now, simple tactics, you see, you put pressure, put pressure and your opponents are going to make mistakes. You, we just need to be ready to capitalize on that. Again, forget about taking the pawn on b3. Now, my knight finds a way to get to a good square. I want to go to b6 or to d6, either one. And uh, of course, now I'm even happy if we simplify the game. Look, if we make it to the end game, I'm already, like I said, I'm up a couple pawns. This is more than enough. Right, knight d6, powerful knight hitting the queen. And now I could take on c4, I could bring the other rook to c1, or I could do rook c4 and put pressure on that knight. So now my opponent makes a mistake, he was already in trouble, but now the game is just too easy. Guys, this was a 23-70 something, and notice how they make these silly mistakes when you put pressure on them. So 24-49, really close to 24-50, if we win this game, that's it. We got the black pieces, and of course, we're going to finish it with the Pierce defense. So g6, now my opponent plays f3, this is more like a 150 attack, and even though on lesson 70, guys, we talked about queen a5 and b5, like you saw in, in, in one of the first games, um, recently I started to, t to tell you guys about this queen b6 idea. So I took the poison pawn on b2, now I'm trying to get back with my queen, and that results in a waste of, waste of, uh, of a few moves. So I know that I'm going to be attacked heavily, but I'm up a pawn, so let's see. Now, we're playing a 2377, and of course we have to be very, very careful. Yeah, so here I was a little bit concerned about that, like bishop h3, bishop g4, trying to remove my knight. As long as my knight is on h5, they won't be able to make a lot of progress. Now, I castle, putting my rook on the same file as the king as I put my king in safety. So I'm comfortable here, but I know they're going to start attacking me sooner or later. Now, knight b6, not only opening up my bishop from c8, but I want to get to c4 as well. Now, knight d5, we've talked about it. Um, it's a quick trick here. If I take the queen, they're going to do knight e7, check, and then they collect on d2. But my opponent did not realize one little detail here. Um, once I take the queen, he's going to go for that well-known tactic. But the problem is that the knight has no way out. So I trade the bishops, that way the knight cannot take anything. And after rook e8, the knight is pretty much trapped. Guys, once we get that knight, 
all we need to do is simplify the game. Of course, make sure we don't blunder any pieces, but uh, this should be pretty easy to finish now. And I know you might be thinking, okay, all of these games, someone, many people blunder a piece, blunder a checkmate. And guys, this only proves that playing at the 23, 24 level here in chess.com is not uh, like you're playing against a machine. Everything that we have used so far, we have covered in our lessons. So it's just a matter of being alert, paying attention, and of course, uh, a little bit of uh, a little bit of luck sometimes. <laughs> so nice e4, just getting away from the attack with a threat on that bishop. And I'm this close, guys, to open up the my rooks. There you go. So my opponent just resigned. We made it to 2455. I'm going to leave it here, guys. But in our next video, you're going to see me going from 2450 to 2500. So with that said, I'm going to leave it here and let me know in the comments if you found some value in these lessons, if you like the format of the voiceover, or if we should just go back to me explaining as I play the games. So with that said, I will see you guys in our next video.